Is this the new date that the Lord has made? We have to rejoice and be glad in it. I miss you so much. Amen. 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 Yes, it's good that we have met today according to the will of God. Yeah? So today I want to talk about the three wills of God. Or the three ways of God. Will slash will. Yeah, you can just write that if you are writing. Uh, you know, in theology we have what we call language barrier. Yeah? Yeah, so some things are used the way they are for people to understand. You know the will of God, eh? In Swahili we say, Mapenzi ya mungu. Yeah? Amen. 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 You know the Bible is very clear. The Bible says that the work of God, God finished his work from the beginning. Yeah? Yeah, from the beginning, God finished his work. Finished his work. He knows the beginning from the end and the end from the beginning. Meaning that we are living according to the will of God. But today, I want to talk about the three ways or the three ways. Of God. Kuna way number one. There is way number one. Way number one is the will of man. Why is the will of man connected to the will of God? In the book of Genesis, when God created Adam, he breathed his spirit in him. Yes, and Adam became a living soul. Meaning, there is that godliness in Adam. That's why we say that the will of God, the will of man, Sometimes can be called the will of God because you have the godly nature in us. Even if you are a drunkard, even if you are a pagan, even if you are a witch, provided you are created by God, God breathed his spirit unto you for you to become a living soul. That means they have some godliness in you. Eh? Is that true? Amen. Amen. So that is what we call the will of man. There are people who minister according to the will of man and God respects them. Because the wills, uh, uh, in simple terms, uh, is about choices. Yes, it's defined as the choices of man, the ways of man, the, the, the ways that man chooses to follow. So there's that will of man that some people minister or walk through it. Through experience, education, uh, upbringing, uh, you associate your friends, people that familiarize yourself with. Yeah, those are the people who influence the will of man in your life. The will of man is like witchcraft to a man. Though God can stop it, but it's like, a, it's like witchcraft to a man. How? Let me give you a story. There were these two sons. One was Esau, and another one was Jacob. When they were in their mother's belly, an angel appeared to their mother and told their mother that I'm seeing two nations in your womb. Yet the younger will serve, the, the elder will serve the younger. You know the story. So when they were born, yes, according to the performance, their performance in life, his father, because the father was the carrier of blessing, looked at his two sons and saw that Esau was the one who deserved the blessings. You know the story. So at the end of it, when the time of blessing came, we are told that the, bless, the Jacob stole his brother's blessing. Why? Because according to the will of man, it was Esau to be blessed. But in reality, Esau was a curse, and he was a curse by God. Why? If you read his story, we, have, we found out that he married, he married two wives. A Canaanite and a Moabite, Moabite who were a thorn in the flesh to his parent. So meaning that his life was cast from, the, from his mother's womb. But who am I giving you that story? Sometimes as parents, yes, God can bless you with a child. Yes, and after God blessing you with that child, you don't know the will of God in that child's life. Then you start dedicating that child because Hannah dedicated uh, who? Samuel. Isn't it? Yes, I want my child to be a bishop. That's according to you, according to what you think. I want my child to be a prophet. That's according to your will. Then you start blessing your child, saying that this child will be a prophet. This child will be a an evangelist. This child will be a this, this, and that. Is that what we do? Remember, you are a God to that child because you are the first God before he, reach, he reaches the unseen God in heaven. So anyone that you speak to that child will interfere with the life of them. Maybe that child was born to be a lawyer, but because you are a pastor, because you believe 
that for you to enter the kingdom of God, you have to stand in the pulpit and preach. You distort the will of God to your child. So when a child grows up, yes, he becomes confused. Because maybe that child's intention was to pursue his legal degree to become a lawyer. But his parents, yes, says, spoke some negative things that negates the will of God to that child. So a child becomes bewildered. Yes, and a child becomes mesmerized in life. So, I don't know how to put it. I <laughs> But that's the feeling. Yeah, that's why there are some children who are born in churches, yes, whose parents bless them according to the will of men, yes, and that blessing distorted uh, the will of God upon them. So you okay, grow on a growth, you are confused. Why? Because there are two wills that are fighting you: the will of God and the will of men. Yeah? Do you know that? <laughs> Don't tell me that lawyers will not go to heaven. Who told you that presidents will not go to heaven? The Bible says that, and God gave Nebuchadnezzar, the pagan king, yes, over the children of God, the Israelites. That's what the Bible says. And uh, if you read the story of Nebuchadnezzar, the book of Daniel, chapter 1, 2, 3, and 4, the God really loved Nebuchadnezzar. Anytime Nebuchadnezzar misbehaved, he used to repent and thank God. That is verse 2, 3, and 4. Until he died in salvation. He did not say, may the Lord of Meshach, Shedrach, and Abednego be glorified. The same same King Nebuchadnezzar is the one whom God gave revelations, prophecies of global destiny that we are using even today. You remember the story of the statue? Yeah, the dream of the statue. You know that dream. You know that story, yeah? You know the story of Nebuchadnezzar when he dreamt about a tree with leaves, with all white animals and human beings living under it. Yes, yet he was a king, but he, uh, not, not only a king, but a paganistic king, but it was the will of God for Nebuchadnezzar to be a king. Yeah? Who told you that because you are a pastor, your child must be a pastor? Maybe it is not the will of God for your child to be a pastor, but it can be the will of God for your child to be a politician. And through politics, that child will say, can send the masses and go to heaven. Yeah. Am I making sense? Yes. Just imagine, I'm a pastor. I have seven sons and seven daughters. All of them are pastors like me. Yes, because I have anointed them to be pastors. Yes, we will be a lawyer. Who will sell boutiques and clothes in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in a boutique? Yes? Who will be a doctor? Yeah? <laughs> what does it feel? And that's why you have 12 tribes of Israel. There are those who are appointed and are known to be judges. Some were Levites. Some were uh, 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 traders, international traders. Yes, read the book of Genesis chapter 49. Uh, read about the blessings of the children of Israel. Each family has a unique blessing besides being the generation or the government or the family of God. Yeah? Sometimes we force the will of God to our children that distorts the will of God into our children's life. Yes, bringing up confused children, yes, because the words that we speak for our children as parents affect them. That's why the Bible says, Proverbs chapter 4, chapter 14 verse 12. Proverbs 14 12, the Bible says that there is a way that seems right to a man. Yes, there is a way that, see, that seems right to a man. Like, I want my child to be a pastor. That is right. I want my child to be a doctor. That is right. I want my child to be like this. That is right. But, let us continue. But the end thereof are the ways of death. Yeah? Someone was anointed to be a pastor by a parent when he was in his or in her mother's womb. Then, after that, that child becomes a pastor. Not according to the will of God, but according to the will of man. Yes? According to the prayers of the will of man. According to the experience of the will of man. Yes, according to the... Hey, yeah, that's why nowadays we have crooked pastors. Who are crooked pastors? Those who go after witchcraft. 
to empower their ministry, saying that my grandpa was a bishop, my father was a bishop, I am a bishop, but the ministry tough for me. For I to pump my ministry up, I have to go and engage into occultic practices. Yes, then boom, they become witches. In the pulpit. Why? Because of primitive teaching. Eh? Do you think that because President Ruto is a president, do you think that his son, his generation will be a generation of president after president after president? No, it will reach a point that even one, even like, for example, like Kibaki, yes? he never left a legacy of a politician behind, yet he was a president and he was in politics for many years. But what about believers? Yeah? You just want your child to be a pastor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You start blessing that child to be a pastor. You start disciplining that, disciplining that child to be a pastor. Yet, yeah, maybe the will of God would that child to be saved, yes, because you are a Christian. Yes, but serve God as a lawyer. We have Christian Lawyers Association. We have the Christian Doctors Association. We have accountant, Christian accountant. We have Christian engineers. Yeah? <laughs> So they can be a pastor in their field because they will work perfectly according to the calling and the gifts of God upon them. Just like the George, Joseph. The yeah, Bible says that when Joseph was arrested, whichever tax he was given when he was in jail, he did it perfectly. Meaning he was not a Levite. He was not supposed to preach, but he was to preach by his characters, his discipline, the way he speaks. Yes. To the extent that the people that used to familiarize themselves to him used to say inwardly that that man has the spirit of God that can help the king to interpret and remember his dreams. <coughs> yeah. So there are people whose ministries are based on in the will of men. I want my son to sing like that one. I think my son can do it better, yeah? I know that I'm learning, I'm able. I can preach better than that brother. Yes, I can pray louder than that sister. So I think I'm the one, I, I, I think I have, the, I, have, I have what it takes to do it better than that person. So I think I, you know, then I think, I think, kind of callings. Do you have such people? Huh? Yes, you may do it because you first, and pray for it. Yes, but remember, it may not be the will of God for you to do it. And at the end of it, it leads to death. Do you know the origin of death? The Bible says that when seeing Dante Kisha Kukoma, in Asiata, Uza Maguti, Uza, remind me that verse. <laughs> do you know that verse? Yeah? For the wages of sin is death. Meaning, if you minister according to the will of man, you are ministering in sin that will lead him into death. That's why not all pastors will inherit the kingdom of God. Not every gospel artist will inherit the kingdom. Yes, you may do the right thing at the right time, empowered by God, but against the will of God. Yeah? You may preach quality gospel. Yes, you may save souls, thousands of them, but empowered by God, but not according to the will of God. Remember, those who will be called the children of God are those who do the will of my father. That's what Jesus Christ said. Not those who do the will of human of fellow human beings. Jeremiah said that blessed is the man who does what? Who depends on God. But cast is he who depends on man. So if you depend on man to sharpen your destiny, if you depend on man to be directed into your destiny, my friend, you are lost. Even if it is your parent. Why? Because when it comes to destiny, yes, even your parents may not know what the will of God in your life, unless he is spiritual. Remember your father of these two sons, Esau and Jacob. Hmm? Out of these two, who could have been your favorite? Esau, because Esau was hardworking. Yes, he was very mature. He used to reason, he used to focus. But at the end of it, his ways led to death. Why? Because he was man's choice, but not God's choice. The choice of man is not the choice of God. Amen. 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 Amen.
There was this one called the bastard child. When I'm positive. Yes, that's a very good example. <coughs> he was blessed, living in a rich family, but decided to do things according to the will of man. According to his own thoughts, he thought that he's enough. What happened to him? He found himself in a big pit. The will of man cannot lead you into, into the ways everlasting. Because the will of man is limited. Yes, God will empower him. The Bible says that the Lord, his father, empowered him with money and possession so that he go and enjoy his life according to the will of man. That child got with, went to his father and prayed, told his, told his father, please give me this because I know myself. I know that I can do this if you give me this. That's how some people pray, yeah? God, I know that if you give me a sermon, I can preach like Papa Tony. I can preach more than Papa Tony. So give me a sermon to preach. Then God gives you a sermon, and God empowers you. They were saying that his father empowered him with money and possession. Then, after that preaching, instead of going to heaven, he finds himself in a big speed. Yeah? <laughs> what does he feel? Yes, in his life, he was empowered by his father. He was given permission by his father. That boy went to his father and interceded, he prayed, he fasted, and his father gave him his possession. But at the end of preaching, at the end of enjoying his life, at the end of everything, boom, dead. The will of man. The will of man, people, are you there? The will of, of man, ministers, are you there? Are you there? <laughs> what else is here? Number two, will number two. Kuna, there is what we call the will of God. What is the will of God? People who live under the grace of the will of God are full of, are, are full of miracles. Yes, they believe in miracles. I think it's their king, but he's a working, wonderful, miracle God. Yes, yes, they depend on God so much. Yeah, whatever they speak, whatever they talk, whatever they... Wow, they depend on God because they are doing the will of God. Yes, there are some people who come to church. Yes, to, maybe you could work in a Godia that is a keyboard. Is it the will of God for God to play that keyboard? Is it the will of man or the will of God for God to play that keyboard? Yeah? If it is the will of man, that is competition. If it is the will of God, that is being in Lingala, yeah? In, in, not legal or French, <laughs> what does it feel? <laughs> Amen? So even the will of God is good. God will empower that person. But at the end of the day, dead. If it's the will of man, if, it, if it's the will of God, good God will empower that person. And that person will feel the urge of playing that game because he is empowered to play that. This is just an example I'm giving him. Yeah? Yes, if I come to preach here, uh, according to the will of man, it reach a point that I'll find myself in a big speed. Why? Because I'm doing the will of man. But if I'm doing the will of God, yes, I will never find myself in a big speed. Because the Lord has empowered me to do his will. Yes? Am I making sense? Yes. And the will, I'm just, I've told you that the will of God are full of surprises. Yes, a person who is ministering under the will of God can never plan himself. Eh? Things just happen. He can never predict himself. He can never predict what to preach. He can, sometimes he cannot even prepare his sermons or teachings because he's doing the will of God. Whenever he ministers, uh, people feel well, people feel good, people feel elevated. Why? Because he's doing the will of God. No struggle because God is there. Isaiah 55. Let me tell you why that person cannot arrange himself. That person cannot plan himself. It's because the will of God is not the will of man. Yeah? Let us read Isaiah 55. Verse number 8 and 9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways. Yes? God is separating his mind, his intelligence, his ways, the way he do things, yes, with human being, with a human being who is following his will. Meaning, your thought life cannot change the will of God in your life. 
Even if you try to do anything, hey, sometimes you say, God, I don't need you now. Well, I want to marry. So then, like Papa to me, my ears are going. I want to marry now. I want this one. No, I want to force myself to eat. Yes, yeah, if it's not the will of God, it can never happen. Because you are doing the will of God. Yes, I want to quit that church. I'm tired with that church. I am there, my friend. The next Sunday you'll find yourself here. Yeah. Yes, I don't want to fast. I'm running away from fast. My friend, even if you are eating, you are fasting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the will of God. Your life is being controlled by the will of God. Yes, if it is your child, yes, he will never live according to your thoughts. He will never get mad according to his parental thoughts or parental plans. Yes, he will live a very different life from what the parents, from what his teachers will plan to do. Let me tell you one story. There's a pastor that I know. We have the pastors who are called pastors who are Kushikitia. Kushikitia is only one of them. Who are pastors. Acting. Acting pastors. Eh? Kushikitia. Eh? Hey, acting. Ah, good. Thank you. <laughs> what are you serious, sir? So, the, the, here is his story. This man is a very prayerful man. He is a walking Bible. In fact, I used to call him the biblical encyclopedia. Because he knows everything from the, from the book of Genesis to Malachi, then Matthew, to the Revelation, backward and forward. And that man, when it comes to prayer, my friend, you don't pray. You are joking. Because that man prays one man. Hey! <laughs> yeah? But that person that I'm talking about is very poor and confused. This is a real story I'm telling you. So I wondered, how comes this man looks like this? Me, I was in wilderness, this is, this is my senior. When I was in wilderness, sometimes used to help me pray. I'm out of the wilderness, yes, this man is still the same, very prayerful, that has lots of insight. Then I'm out of that, yes, I'm now like his boss again. He's still the same, same person. Why? So I came to realize later that there is ministerial story. That he was misery in a church, that's not a church like this one. So it is a point that that church opened another branch somewhere. And in that branch, there was a pastor in that branch who died prematurely. So the pastor in that church, the main church, looked around and said, the way I'm seeing this brother can go and act like a pastor in that church. Yeah? Why? Because he's just saved, he's very active in church, so let him be a pastor. So he went and, become a, and became a pastor in the church that he is even today. Yeah? So out of that, that man never grows. He's pale, he's, yeah, he looks like just a useless man. When you meet him around, you can never even say that he's a pastor. There's nothing to show that that man is a pastor. Why? He's pastoring, but not according to the will of God, but the will of man. Because someone said that you look like you can do it, and he went over to do it. That's why that man is a pastor. Yes, even today that man is a pastor, but he's a chamber boy in someone's house. Do you think that Papa Tony can be a chamber boy? I better eat grass. <laughs> because my father has everything. He's he, he, the one who called me. Eh? And give me that answer. He's the one who gave me that position to be a pastor. Why should I worry? Yeah? Why should I go and work at a salmon a pagan's roof as a house elf? Yet I'm, I'm aged. No, that is not possible. Yeah, that's why I'm answering some questions here. That's why there are some people, yes, who are hanging, acting. Pastors. Hmm? Come on, I say my you. In Nigeria, are you free? I don't think so. <laughs> so you have to, to, to weigh yourself. Are you working? Are you operating? Are you the will of men or the will of God? There's a lady in the Bible whose name is Mary. There was a day I was teaching some people about Mariology. You know, Mariology is a very wide topic in the university, yeah? Isn't it? So this Mary. Uh, when 
the Lord appeared to him through an angel Gabriel, uh, telling her that in your womb you have a child. What did she say? Not my will, but your will be done. And out of that, that poor teenager became a celebrity that we study as theology, theological theories in universities even today. Why? Because it is the will of God. The will of God is what changes someone from grass to grace without a sweat. The will of God is what will make people to love him, yes, without a sweat. The will of God is what will make people run and even if they see mistakes in you, they will still idolize you. Why? Because it is the will of God. But the will of man has limits. Yeah? Let Papa to me, Papa to me, yeah? What else it feel? Amen. Yes, that's how the will of God works. Let me tell you one thing about ministry and ministering. We don't minister because we are the holiest people on earth. I was reading about Abraham, Abraham, Abrahamology. You know what that's study? Hmm? The study of Abraham. Yeah? I came to find out that Abraham was a businessman, a shrewd businessman. When it comes to business, that man used to pray. Come on, a biashara. You know to get biashara. You know biashara, isn't it? We have to use tricks for you to get profit. But out of this, Abraham was a friend of God. But I'm not encouraging you people to become shrewd because God will judge. Eh? Maybe that's not the reason why Abraham delayed in marriage. Eh? <laughs> but that's it for Because he doesn't think of so I'm not encouraging anyone to live a sinful evil life. So what I want to tell you is this, that even if I rumble in tongues like an angel, I may not be perfect. I may have some weaknesses in me because I'm a human being. Eh? And that's what made God God. And a man, man. That's why Paul said somewhere that the things I want to do are the things I don't want, that I don't do and the things I don't want to do are the things that I do. Yeah? Meaning, that if you work under the will of man, your stress will overpower you. Because anytime you fail, you feel like you are knocked out. But if you are under the will of God, the Lord himself will lift a standard unto you. He will elevate you. There is stress in your house, but the Lord is pushing you. Do it, you are my son. Yes, your tongue is rebellious, but the Lord is pushing you. Pray, still keep on preaching. Yes, your church is stagnant, but that will of God is Pushing you, is turning you up, telling you, go for it, you are my son. Yeah. But the will of man, it goes with education, with what you know, with what people will think. Yeah. So we, we, we end up backsliding in a big speed. But the will of God will never allow you to be to, be, to, to backslide. Even if you fall seven times a day, the Lord will still pick you up and tell you, my son, my son, wake up and keep the going. Now you understand between the will of men and the will of God, yeah? Am I making sense? Yes. Now we have the last one. The last one is the perfect will of God. Yeah? Tell your neighbor, the perfect will of God. The perfect will of God. That is the hardest. Yeah? <laughs> Bola, Amen. 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 That is the hardest. And it never comes. Just like that. You know the Bible is very categorical on this. The Lord cannot give you a ministry that you can't handle. The Lord can never, can never allow his will to be done in your life if you are not in a position to handle it. You know, before I go to this, there was this king in the book of Isaiah chapter 38. Is it Isaiah 38? This king, this king was called who? Ezekiah. It was the will of God for this king to die, isn't it? But he distorted the will of God and asked God to give him, to add him more years. He reminded God, I used to pay tithes, I used to preach. I used to do this, I used to do this. God added him 15 more years. But if you read in the book of Chronicles, Second Chronicles, we are told that he did live according to the grace that was according to him. And he died in sin. Now he's rotting inside, in hell. Why? Because he distorted the will of God by the will of man. You know, the will of man can overturn the will of God in your life and make you perish. So, here comes the perfect will of God. The perfect will of God, yes, the perfect will of God is the hardest when it comes to salvation. 
Even Jesus Christ himself, in his physical capacity, was overwhelmed according to the book of Luke, chapter 22, verse 42. Let me let us read that. Luke chapter 22, verse 42. When Jesus was at the gardens of Gadarene, he perceived what was to happen to him concerning crucifixion. And this is how he prayed. Let us start in 41, verse 41. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone cast. And kneeled down and prayed, saying, Father, if you be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. Yes. Yes, I was reading this verse in the Hebrew, Biblia Hebraica. Yes, I discovered there is a word that was omitted. Yes, that, that word uh, is translated as. Let not my we, but you are perfect. The word perfect, yes, was not translated into King James Version and the version that you have. Help one as you do. Hey, because now this is not a, the will of God. This is the perfect will of God that in, in entails suffering. Let me tell you, any person who is doing the perfect will of God is operating to a higher dimension than the person who is operating in the will of God and the will of man. Any person who is operating according to the perfect will of God must face challenges, suffering beyond measures. Are you aware of that? That sometimes they cry behind the scenes and tell God, I don't want to preach anymore. Kill me, I want to die. Take me to heaven. I want to run away of this. Because the suffering that that person will endure uh, in terms of money, in terms of marriage, in terms of your children, in terms of the job that you are doing, in terms of the church that you are serving, in terms of in, in, in everything, my friend, you will face a lot and lots and lots of challenges that will make you live in tears for the rest of your life. Yeah? And because you are doing the perfect will of God, People who do the perfect will of God are perceived to be mad. Yeah, this person looks like a madman, like Isaiah. He walked three years, only three years or three months, naked. Yeah, he's doing the perfect will of God. There's these other prophets. His name is Amos. He ate cow dung for several days. Yeah, there this man of God who was doing the perfect will of God. John the Baptist. He used to wear skin. He, uh, he used to eat locust and honey. The perfect will of God. There is any minister who is under the grace of doing the perfect will of God. Yes. People perceive him as mad, confused. He don't have this. Look at him. Yes. I'm a kid to work. Don't tell me what you're jealous, but this what these people are saying is true. If you read about Abrahamology, the study of Abraham, yes, there is a, there are some people, not some people, people used to call Abraham an old mule. Do you know what's a mule? A mule is an interbreed, interbreed of a horse and a donkey. A bull and a donkey, when you crossbreed a bull, a, 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 a donkey and a horse, yes, they produce an animal called a mule. A mule can't reproduce. So that means to be called a mule. He's rich, but without a child. So people used to mock him. Why? Because Abraham was doing the perfect will of God. When Stephen was being stoned while blessing the people who were stoning them, it is the will of God that was blessing these people, saying that, no, don't write this into the book of judgment. Forgive them, for they don't know what they are doing. And they are stoning. That is madness according to the logical world. 
Yeah? Yeah, he never ran away. He never hid himself. He just stood firm and said, Lord, bless these people. Don't go this sin and to them. Set them free. Deliver them. Bless them. Those who are jobless, give them jobs. Yeah? And they're stoning him to death. When Jesus Christ was being crucified in the cross, when he was being tormented, tortured, what did he say? Forgive them, Father, for they do not know what they are doing. Not my will, but let your will be done. Yeah? Are you living according to the perfect will of God? That's what the moral is. That's what the moral is. My friend of the Oko, he's a fan of Oko. Amen. That's why you're a papa. You need to still sing. That's why you don't have cars. That's why you're talking about my soma. We are just, just ordinary, yeah. Because you can't understand us. You can't understand someone who is operating under the will and the perfect will of God. You can't understand that person. You know that person looks like a mad person to you. Because that person cannot explain himself to you. Look at the likes of Elijah. Yeah, he used to live in caves. Look at the life of Elijah. He used to live in caves. Look at the life of Moses. His life was full of mountain climbings on and off. The perfect will of God. Give us salvation, Sirius. We have bread. We, 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 we have what we call rats. Yes? And that this runs as, as, as per the grace of the will of God. And how does this thing begin in your mother's womb? It's not in the mountains, in Catalonia, where people think. It is not in where, in the fasting areas, in this God, you know, where hell's gate. Yeah? It's not in those places. It's not in Mount Kenya, facing Mount Kenyaga. No! It's not in facing Mount Elgon. No! It begins in your mother's womb. In your womb, we have two, two nations. The elder shall serve the younger. That's what you're calling him towards here. So once God calls you, anything that happens to you is part of your calling. Eh? Yes, from your mother's womb, anything that happens to you is part of your calling. I was telling someone somewhere, this bishop is a bishop. He's a Mr. Stover. You know Mr. Stover is a bishop? Do you know that? <laughs> Father, you know, he is saying me. <laughs> Allow me to go. But I'm not gossiping him because he's, I know he'll watch this. We <laughs> 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 were discussing about T.D. Jakes. Because I don't know T.D. Jakes is a gay. T.D. Jakes, yeah, yes. He may be a gay. I don't, I, uh, I, 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 I don't want to, to, to defend him. Yeah? Yes, he may be a gay. But maybe. Yeah? Through that mistake, or out of that mess, yes. How do you know if it was the will of God for that thing to happen to him? How do you know? Yeah? That's what Jesus Christ said, do not judge. Hypocrite, take off the log in your eyes before you take a speck in your neighbor's eye. That's why I normally tell you people repeatedly, whenever you see someone coming to church, after come out you this trip, even that person, even if that person is a drunkard, even if that person has just come out of a witch doctor's den, yeah, provided he comes to church, then that person comes to church. Maybe God allowed, allowed that to happen for the ministry in him to be elevated, empowered, and given a mystic aura that will change the masses in future. Yeah? Yeah? Is it true? No, oh, so don't point fingers. But you don't put it at the center of the child. What are you doing? 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 But let them come. Come, baby, come. Come, baby, come. Until they don't change your seat. I don't change people. It's Jesus Christ who change people. I don't bring people to church. It's Jesus Christ who do that. So whenever they come and they do their things out there, huh? That's Jesus Christ's problem. So when, whenever they come here, I just give them what Jesus Christ has told me to give them. Yeah? Yeah? Then out of it, one day maybe they will testify. I used to be a pastor. I was with Mr. Stopper. I was with Mr. Stopper somewhere. Yeah? As you met a pastor, a useful pastor. 
That pastor preached, preached, preached. Hey, to the same, wow, you are preaching, but you are a Kenyan to the jerks. But I got to appear to get, see what he did. He barely said, oh, he 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 so that's the will of man, the will of God, and the perfect will of God working at the one common denominator, Jesus Christ. I've given you a uh, let's be paraphrased as I finish. I've given you a story. This young boy went to his father. He was praying, he was fasting, he was raising altars. Give me my possession. I want to go. His father gave him his possession as he went his way. The body will of man led him into a pig's pit. There is a, the will of God, who, which is different from the will of man. That's why I don't these people. Me, I don't plan myself. I don't. Yeah? Maybe if one day I'm mad, maybe. So I'm going to be the younger day, maybe. Maybe. I'm not predicting that. Why? Because so my wife can ask me, hey, I couldn't sky. I'm broke hundred percent. Which is true. Then after a few minutes, my mom said, Poor you and Tazan can risk it. But I said, You have. I don't know how to do it. This man is a liar, isn't he? He is the will of God. I'm living on the will of God. I can't reason myself. It is not my reasoning. Yeah? It is God who is doing these things. I'm living miraculously. The righteous man shall live by faith. That when he doubts, I'm not pleased with him. Isn't it? That's what I'm saying. According to the will, the perfect will of God. My friend, you don't have to ask God to give you such a person as a husband or a wife because you will see fire. <laughs> yeah? What about if you are married, you are start walking naked for three years? Eh? Immediately after marriage, I walk naked for three years. What will, what will you do? Yeah? Or I start eating cow dung hmm? for three years, eating cow dung. You told me a lunatic. What kind of a person is this? Is it? But I'm thinking the, will of, the perfect will of God. Yeah? 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 Amen. 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 Hey, my to me, you are perfect, evil, and my child is the best of the best. No! It is the will of God that is working on us. Don't see us that we are too strong. No! That's why Jesus Christ says somewhere. Jesus Christ says somewhere. Without me, you can do nothing. Do you know that? Hey, you know, some, sometimes, Sometimes, let me tell you this, sometimes, what's only to me a prayer request? Pastor, I'm feeling very bad. Not why you see when I tell you, I'm done to go by in that traffic. Maybe you want to be a guy in this all me. The man party, I can't even pray. But my God, that is person. Like a simple book of folk. Fifteen minutes later, hey, Pastor, thank you for your prayers. Yeah? Thank you for your prayers. The Lord has done it. Was I involved there? No, it is God. Without Christ, I can do nothing. It's Jesus Christ who has done that miracle. That's why there is nothing like pastors and miracles. There is nothing like pastors and prophecies. Do you know that? It is God who do these things according to his will, based on the calling that you have. Ata ni ombe, ata ni kishawut. Upone. Si mimi ni mekuponya. And I'm not there. I don't know even how you have been healed. I don't have to brag that I'm the one who prophesies. I'm the one who, the way I'm seeing some pastors do. No! It is Jesus Christ. All glory and honor belongs to Jesus Christ. The issue of pastors elevating themselves. I was watching in social media. There's a pastor that when he comes to church, people bow down to him and cry under his feet for mercy, for blessings. Because it's their daddy, their daddy has just arrived. No! We only have one Father in heaven. That's what the Bible says. Amen. Yeah? And all the glory and honor belong to Jesus Christ. Yeah? I will tell you someone, somewhere. Do you know that sometimes I unleash intelligence that I don't know where the, the intelligence has come from? It's not about reading books. Even I don't have time to read the books nowadays. Yeah? It's just the Spirit of God that do all these things. He gives me power to preach, power to teach, 
power to, to counsel, to advise, and power to lead. That's why under everything we do, all glory and honor belongs to Jesus. Yes, not us, but Jesus Christ. He is the only Savior. He is the only one who empowers us. And he's the one who said that without me, you can do nothing. He's the one who said that I will bring you a helper. He's the one who said that my power I give unto thee. He's the one who said that don't fear them when you meet them. Because I will give you words to tell them. Eh? Is Papa making sense? Is Papa making sense? Yes. So let us learn to give God all the glory and honor. In Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. Let us stand on our feet. Let us stand on our feet. I hope the Lord has spoken to someone today. I hope someone is touched somewhere. I know that someone has really elevated someone and has, well, I don't know what to say about it. But I know that the Lord has blessed him. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Nimekubali bwa, nimekubali, nimekubali. Amen.
be it sociological, be it economical, be it interpersonal, be it philosophical, there is fault against us that shall prosper. Because in the book of Colossians, you say that you disarm the powers and principalities of darkness. So Lord, they will never hurt us or harm us in any way. In any way, they will never prevail. In any way, they will never plot us. In any way, they will never destroy us. In any way, they will never fight us. I dispossess and command the angels of God to go and fight against the angels of darkness who are fighting our destinies, who are fighting our jobs, who are fighting our altars, who are fighting our tithes, who are fighting our offerings. Oh, Jehovah Lord, may you send your angels, wherever they are, may they fight them, may they destroy them, may they confuse them, may they be consumed by the very beasts they have prepared for us. May they be consumed by the very fire they have lit for us. May they be hanged by the very gallows they have prepared for us. May they fall in the pits they dug for us. In Jesus' mighty name. May all the calamities that are planned by our prognosticators and planters as a sin be reversed and be returned back to them in Jesus' mighty name. Whoever is holding our jobs, our husbands, our wives, our children, our careers, our prosperities, may they be tormented until they release what rightfully belongs to us at the right time, at the right age, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. If there is any delay in our life that is not according to your will, I frustrate, I roll it, and throw it into a dish. May our goodies and cream, the cream, come down to us at the right time, in the right way, with the right people, in Jesus' name. Amen. Our lives shall never be the same again. We shall never be the same again. We shall never be the same again. Give us power against the sin. Give us power against the sexual immorality. Give us power against deception. Powers against this emotional wounds. We want Jehovah God to walk righteously and confidently. Not by might or strength, but by the power of the Holy Ghost. Scrutinize us. Take us into divine clinic examinational room and find out if there is something in us that negates your will to operate in us. So that you blot it out, so that you shoot it out, so that you remain holy and precious before you because it's really that without holiness you can't see you. Don't only want to see you. Open the eyes of our heart, of our, of our open the eyes of our heart you want to see you. Increase the power of spiritual sensitivity so that we'll be in a position to spot anything demonic working against us. Expose all hypocritical friends, connections, and associations so that we'll be safe and live according to your discerning power and grace. In Jesus' mighty name. I'm praying for each and every individual who is here. Meet them at the center of their needs. See their parents through in their villages, their siblings, whatever they are. See them through. Any family that is connected to any member who is here is blessed. Is blessed. Is healed. And I proclaim order, forgiveness, and reconciliation of ministers into our family, into our workplace, and into our neighbors at large. We we'll say, Jehovah, that if you walk with you, we we'll make peace between us and our enemies. We want to live a peaceful life because you are Jehovah Shalom, the King of Peace. And in Jesus' mighty name. 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 Mighty name. Our books are being deleted in the list of premature death in the list of poverty, in the list of confusion, in the list of demons, in the list of disasters, in the list of bad luck, in the list of witchcraft, in the list of demonic and of lineage, our names are being deleted completely and are being
being written in the books of blessings, in the books of good health, in the books of prosperity, in the volume of books that have power over everything on earth and in heaven above. Because you've done everything under the service of man, everything that you created for us, through your son, for him and to him, will serve us in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' name. Thank you so much. God bless you.